Hey, what's up, guys? We're back on Counter-Strike. It's been a few months. I haven't really released any frag movies or um, did any videos on any of the majors or events, partly because my CSGO was actually broken for a solid three months. And trust me, I tried absolutely everything. I ended up having to actually wipe the entirety of my computer. I factory reset it. And then all of a sudden, I can play Counter-Strike again. But leaving off of that... Um, the Stockholm 2021 Major just ended, so I'm going to take this time to kind of go through any inventory changes, my investments, um, how my pickums went, and all that stuff. So it's just going to be a basic Counter-Strike video. Let's start out with the first, which is the Operation Riptide. So that's a whole thing. Um, so far, I finished all of the stars, the week 8 unlocks in a day. So I finished all of them so far. I basically did them all in one day when I got my Counter-Strike back, because I only got it back like a couple weeks ago. Um, I spent my first 25 stars on a T-Master agent, and I ended up getting um, the Guerrilla Warfare uh, Crosswater one, which is you know worth like $70. That's cool. I'm waiting to get three more, and then I'm going to end up picking up one of these CT Master agents, because at the moment... I think that is the best investment, um, getting these master agents. These weapons, you usually never get anything good. And even worse, these ones, you never get really anything good. And the cases are only worth like a couple cents nowadays. So really, these this is the best uh, place to spend your stars. And that's where I'm going to continue to put the rest of um, my stars here. I guess next we can move on to the Stockholm. Um, I did buy uh, the pass with the tokens and... Of course, y'all know me. I got the diamond. It's It was honestly probably one of the easiest diamonds of any major just because Navi were such a high favorite. And honestly, I was rooting for Navi since like the challenger stage. So I'm happy my team technically won. Um, you guys know that I my favorite team is Fnatic, but obviously Fnatic weren't even at this major. Um, so I'll show you guys where I spent my tokens, but just wanted to show you I did get the good diamond coin and obviously I completed all nine challenges. Now let's take a look at the pick them themselves and I guess we'll start with the challenger. So I just I'll, I'll take you through it um, kind of what I was thinking. So phase was one of those teams where they either go three zero or they go zero and three. Um, so I did as far as strategy. All of the best seven teams I put at the bottom. So I basically 100% should get at least five. And then I put the potential 3-0 here and the worst team here. So um, these are the, going into this, the seven teams that I thought would make it through. Um, Astralis, because they're Astralis, even though they barely made it out. Um, Big, they're usually pretty good on land. So I thought, hey, they may might be able to pull it out. They didn't, but that's fine. Uh, Heroic, they've been like second third place basically all of this year so i thought hey that's pretty good um i thought spirit had a pretty good lineup coming in um obviously not uh mouse because i just rops you know it, it's rops um they made it out very barely so again this was a very weak out of all of them i think this was the one i had most trouble with because big i thought would for sure spirit i thought for sure mouse i thought for sure and astralis i thought for sure and all of them were like just barely, you know, because for some reason, like, Entropic did real good. Copenhagen Flames did real good, you know, out of nowhere, so. And then VP, because Jame Time, and Ents, because you know, they've been doing pretty good. And then I, those both of those are right. Um, VP did, made it out pretty easily. Ents, again, was one of those, eh. Um, eh oh, eh, they didn't do amazing. And then again, Phase on my 3-0, and they ended up doing that. The Phase did go 3-0. And then I thought Tyloo was going to be the worst, and they actually went 1-3, so they almost, I think, who did they beat? They beat one of the worst teams. They either beat Sharks or Pain or Godsent. I forgot which one they beat, but yeah, so they ended up not being 0-3 because they beat a single team. But either way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 9 picks, um, so not bad at all. This phase one made me real happy, though. Uh, moving on to the legends this one was quite a bit easier because it was pretty obvious what teams were going to make it through i only have one single um major mistake and that was not putting g2 instead of liquid um i was watching like a thorn video or some not even a thorn i don't think thorn put liquid i was watching someone's video and they a lot of them put liquid so i was just like yeah fine okay liquid but like 
for some reason, my mind just completely forgot that G2 existed. I literally, I locked it in. I was watching the first game and I'm like, wait, G2 is in here. And I was like, what? Dude, I didn't put G2. So my major mistake here was just putting G2, but it ended up being fine because obviously Navi goes through. Again, best seven teams at the bottom, potential 3-0 at the top, potential 0 uh, or within the worst team on the 0-3. Navi for sure, Gambit for sure, Vitality for sure, Nip with Device for sure, and then VP, I thought, they, you know, it's game time. They'll, they'll make it out of this, at least. And then, I was debating whether Entropic or Copenhagen Flames here, and I thought Copenhagen Flames were doing pretty good. They ended up not making it out, but I thought that was, like, you know, it was a fair pick. I don't think it was dumb of me. Liquid was definitely dumb. I shouldn't have put Liquid. I should have put G2. And then the phase was, once again, one of those potential, like, hey, if anyone goes 3-0 here that isn't in the top 7... Probably phase, um, I guess heroic could have maybe gone here too. Heroic, um, potentially Astralis, but the way they looked in the challengers, no way. And then I guess if I would have remembered that G2 existed, I would have put G2 here, or but really I should have put them here. And then of course, everyone kind of knew that uh, evil genius that's not OG, that's evil geniuses. They suck. They they haven't done anything good in the past year. They shouldn't even be in the, Le in the Legends, but it's okay. They got knocked out. So, 0-3. That one was easy. Most people picked this one. But now, moving on. So, again, this was a lot easier than the Challengers. Moving on to the Champion stage, and I'm particularly proud of this one because, um, now, I do have to start with, once again, this was one of the easiest majors to get the gold coin in, or gold diamond. It was very easy compared to a lot of other ones, even like Astralis. You know, sometimes Astralis could lose, but like, it, it, dude, Simple was having the best performance of his life throughout the entire tournament. Like, it, it's hard to be not even a prime Simple, but basically like Goku God Simple. Like, he was going pretty crazy. I know, especially in the finals, but we'll get to that. So anyway... Um, my flex here is that not only did I get the diamond coin like everyone else, but I specifically got a hundred percent of the pick'em correct. So a lot of people got the diamond, but did you get a hundred percent? I don't know. So anyway, let, let's kind of go through my thinking, uh, n uh, Navi versus Vitality. Honestly, this was, this basically should have been the finals. I'm just going to be a hundred percent real. Um, I mean, I'm not disappointed with the finals, but I think Vitality uh, should have been this should have been the final game here um but obviously zaiwu versus um simple and simple didn't show up crazy but um a win is a win right um so i'm really sad zaiwu didn't at least go to the basically uh, semis i honestly again i wish in the semis it would have been navi vitality probably g2 and nip but again, G2 and Nip are, were in one bracket and the Navi and Vitality were in another bracket. But yeah, so it, this if Navi were going to lose anywhere, it would have been straight up in the quarterfinals. But I knew that simple could be of Zywu here. Vitality had a lot of new, has a couple rookies and they're very shaky, very, very shaky. And the difference is Navi has a couple rookies, but Bit, dude, Bit is crazy right now. So it was just on the basis of Navi as better rookies. Gambit, Furia, this was the easiest pick them out of all of these. Obviously, Furia, they're good, but they're just not Gambit good. Um, G2 versus Nip, a lot of people picked um, Nip here just simply because all they have the Vice. Okay, dude, like, the Vice can't carry an entire team here. Um, and G2, bro, you have, like, you have Nico. I mean, like, simply on that fact, Nico or Device? N uh, device? Okay, because what I'm saying is kind of kind of blasphemy here because Device is in contention for GOAT status. Not anymore because it's just clearly simple. But it was always, you know, Device and Simple. Who is the actual GOAT? Because um, Device was the MVP of basically Astralis for four years. But um, I don't know. My brain told me G2. G2 went 3-0. And the legend stage, I am a hundred percent sure. And Nip went like I think they just skated out. They were two two, and I think they went three two. So just on the basis of G two stomping in the legends and Nip doing all right, I thought this should be pretty easy. It's always a G two here, minus if Device has like a one point five KDA or something, and obviously that doesn't happen. 
he has too many again once again bad rookies on nip um not uh, most of them aren't even rookies they're just, they're just they're bad supportive players um and then you got heroic and virtus pro a lot of people once again pick virtus pro and i don't know why heroic is clearly a better team um they're just better they might not be the best on land like they were online but they're clearly better than virtus pro even i don't even have to, clearly heroic's better I, if you pick vp i'm sorry but that was just a dumb pick um okay so that now we have into the semifinals navi versus gambit uh gambit is better than furia but it's still an online team not a land team navi's just goat team so this was probably the second easiest pick out of everything here um navi versus gambit it was easy navi they stomped them uh it was like a semi stomp but yeah very easy g2 heroic once again same thing with uh nip heroic has some good players but come on man you got nico um and a lot of the other players are pretty decent ah, jackson amanek or eh. but hey they're like if you're talking about like the best young slash rookies the yeah, g2's got the better of them even compared to like heroic um so anyway I thought it was a pretty easy pick. So, to me, it was a Navi G2 final. And I thought, well, if this comes down to it, I think the harder carry is still simple. Not to mention, once again, you have Bit. One of the best rookies, minus Zaiwu, in the past couple of years. You have Perfecto, um, which he's he's probably, I think, the worst player on the team. But even he's probably top 15 in the world. And he's the worst. So, you know if your worst is in the top 15 then you you know you've got a good team um obviously you've got boomage uh which is the in-game leader and he's not a high fragging in-game leader but he sure looked like it in this tournament he did pretty well i mean his obviously his, his kd was worse than everyone else's but man he clutched up real hard um that talk about yeah i forgot who i already talked about um perfecto whatever bit is the best rookie yeah you've got simple right um so oh electronic that's the last person i forgot and electronic is for my money the best rifler currently in the game um if you look at simple simple is the best rifler and the best opper um so it's almost unfair if we're talking about just a rifler electronic is definitely the best if we're talking about and op and then simple's obviously way better but point is they're 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 stacked they've got a okay in-game leader they've got the best rifler the best opper the best player just in general the best rookie um yeah so it's just good and then g2 once again they have you know um they have Jax, amanek uh nico i'm totally forgetting their other players um, they're good. Nico did very good in this tournament. I'll just say that he, oh, and Hunter, obviously Nico's cousin. Um, they all did very well, surprisingly. Um, Jackson Amanek pooped the bed pretty good, basically throughout the quarters and semis. Uh, but Nico and Hunter basically uh, scooped them out of it. And to give them credit, in the final, they actually kind of came back. Amanek and Jax, the only reason it even came close on Nuke was just because... Jackson Amanek had a few clutches, but they also had a few grave mistakes. That's in the re in the end. I think that's why they lost was just these heavy mistakes. Like the two that I remember is <clears throat> Jax on top of um, what is it? It's it's not heaven. It's like it's right above the door that leads into lobby. He he literally I think it was Boomage. He was just on the floor. He wasn't even looking at him. He could just headshot him, but he accidentally fell off and he lost. And then Nico having a perfect deagle shot towards a guy on the same place, and he just missed and died. So it was that was two rounds, which 100% should have been given to him because Navi wasn't even looking at the player, and they lost, and they ended up losing in overtime. So I think G2 would have won Nuke, and could have made Mirage competitive if they didn't make so many mistakes. So in the end, I think it was a mix of Navi just being better, but also G2 gave him a good fight, especially Nico. But th they're clearly not major winners because they Navi didn't make mistakes. Navi's mistakes were very if they if there was a mistake, it was like a oh well you know me, I I see why you did that. With G two, they would just made pure they made aiming mistakes, um, positional mistakes. Um, so in my mind, it was if you're mad that G two didn't win, like I'm sorry they they don't deserve it. Like 
you can't say that Navi didn't deserve this. They played perfectly throughout this entire tournament. And fun fact that they said during the stream, this was the first major ever where the champion didn't lose a single map. Every single Astralis, Fnatic, and SK uh, win, they lost at least one map throughout their, you know, throughout the tournament. Navi didn't lose a single map. So, um, even Thorin said this might be the biggest stomp in major history so far. Even Astralis wasn't this dominant throughout the entire um, tournament. And a lot of people could say, no, Astralis was way more dominant. You're just saying that because Nuke looked competitive. But minus Nuke, the last map of the entire tournament, everything else was basically a stomp. So, anyway, slight flex. I got the diamond, so did a lot of other people. But did y'all get 100% on this? I don't know. Tell me in the comments. Um, but, yeah. So that is how the entire thing went. Now, uh, taking a look, so obviously I got six of the um, souvenirs, and I will not be opening them <clears throat> um, for this tournament. I'm just going to, this is kind of just an investing tournament for me. I know a lot of people are saying to not invest in this one because um, everyone's investing. The price aren't going to go. I'm just going to do it anyway, but I'll show you guys. So the souvenirs that I got, I got two of the dust two. I got one Vertigo, one Ancient, one Overpass, one Mirage. So I kind of spread it out um, just because if one of them for some reason goes up in price, you yeah, know, at least I'll have one. Um, so yeah, those are the six packages that I got. Um, these are, so I, I guess I haven't talked to you guys since forever. Um, I bought a few of the RMR Contenders um, capsules just as, um, as like an investment. I opened quite a bit of them though. So I do have a lot of stickers from them. Um, and then I just have some investments that um, are, are not investments or most act. They're just like accidental. These are stickers that I had left over from Katowice 2019. Um, oh, here's the 2020 RMR that I opened. So I, I opened quite a bit of these instead of just selling them. I'm just going to keep these two in case any of them go up in price. Um, and then these are a couple stickers just that I had lying around that I just yoinked back from my brother's account and I'm just holding on to them. There's a couple good ones in here. Actually, I've got a, a, a normal Zywoo here, which that will go up in price if he keeps doing good. I've got, um, I think that's kind of it. That's really good. So I'm, I'm just hoping on the Zywoo one to go up in price maybe. Uh, but I'm going to start doing just like I did with the RMR. I'm going to start investing here. Same with souvenirs. I'm going to start keeping my souvenirs. Um, when <clears throat> these go 75% off, hopefully they go soon. I think I'm going to spend like 20 or $40 on these and just hold on to them for a while. Um, oh, and the autographs, they need to release these because, um, I want some of those too, but I think that's everything as far as an inventory update. Um, nothing crazy new. I'm saving a lot of these XP so I can get the the when the when the year ends the next medal because obviously i have the 21 20 night i have the 20, 19 18 i have most of them as far as inventory i'm still rocking the talon knife ultraviolet here i think it's it's pretty good i like it um yeah this my guns are mostly the same i'm still rocking the etheris op my favorite op ever released i think i know it's just a purple but guys this is the coolest design on the planet and i have the like foil unicorn which i think is super epic i'm still rocking the the uh, Glock, um, what is it called? The Water Elemental. It's again one of the OG favorite. Uh, where's my Aquamarine? Oh, it must be down here. Hello? I just, oh, here it is. I'm still rocking the Aquamarine Revenge. Loving it. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of everything. Um, I haven't played competitive, obviously, for like three months. So that's why I'm Silver Elite. Um, because I just got kind of back on the game. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun recently. Got back in, you know, I started doing a lot of these missions and all of that good stuff. So I think that's it. I just kind of wanted to talk about everything that's going on. I'll probably start making more CSGO videos soon just because now I'm kind of back into the grind here. Um, but guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to like and comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys later. God bless and goodbye.